I actually wish I'd started this vlog a little bit earlier because for the first time ever, I'm going through the process of baking my own loaf. It's a little bit cheating because there's a company that actually sent out the dough and they're called Your Daily Dough. They have a little slogan called It's Doughable, which I quite liked and enjoyed. And they basically send out sourdough, which you can do three different um, types of bread with. You can do focaccia, you can do a sourdough loaf and what was the last one? Pizza. There you go. I've started the process of doing focaccia. You basically do two hours rest, then you play around with it, then you do another two hours rest, and then it goes into the oven for about 30 minutes. So it's like a four and a half hour, five hour process, which is absolutely fine, but Lids and I are planning on going out today to a reclamation yard. Um, I think we're going to Burgess Reclamation Yard. Yes, and we're also going to the Old Flight House. And the Old Flight House. So I've kind of started it at a bad time because we need to get going because I need to get back because this afternoon I'm gonna to go to the driving range with a couple of friends I've not seen in a while. We're really tight on time frames, which means that the dough that is currently, I think it's called, um, what's the name of it? It's not when they rest it, it's called- um, A starter. No, 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 when the- Rising. No, it's called proofing. I think it's called proofing. Mm -hmm. So the dough's proofing at the moment, or proving, somebody correct me, I know you want to. So the bread's currently proofing, and then once that's complete, it's supposed to go in the oven. I guess that this is all times of perfection, and there's a reason why you have to leave it for four hours. We're gonna probably end up leaving it for like six or seven hours. So I don't know what effect that's gonna have, might completely ruin it. Unfortunately, we've gotta get going. So I thought I'd quickly show you where I've got to so far. So this is currently the dough that's sitting in the baking tray. It's had uh, olive oil put on it, and it's basically just been worked into the tray. And I've just pushed my fingers down into it, which I'm guessing is kind of like aerating the bread. I'm not exactly sure. Of course, this is a very common finish that you see on top of focaccia. You always see it with those sort of like lumps. And I guess this is because of this process right here. And I'm then going to add some sun-dried tomatoes, some rosemary and garlic pepper. Um, they will get sprinkled on top and then this will go in the oven. And it will basically hopefully rise and we'll have some focaccia that we can enjoy. A lovely process. I'll show you how it actually comes. So the dough comes in these packs like this, and you can see on it actually it says pizza two hours, focaccia four hours, low four to six hours. It's got a sell by date on it and the ingredients that go into it. And uh, yeah, it just kind of makes a light work of making bread. It cuts half the uh, process down, doesn't it? So you can just get straight onto it. Have your own fresh loaf. I really like it because it's kind of like teaching me this part of the process without having to worry about this, and then I'll do this part of the process next. Happy days. Well, Lids and I just about to head out, so I'm gonna be leaving that on the table. Fingers crossed Lumi doesn't put a pour in it. Well, that could be quite cool. <laughs> nice pour effect in the focaccia. We'll see how it goes. All of these areas have now had the topsoil and seed in, which is fantastic. The rain, the rain is just about to start for the week, so the ground is warm, the weather's gonna work its magic, and we might get some germination. You've been driving this car, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Very close. Sitting at the steering wheel like this. It's because I'm little. Driving like an old lady. I am an old lady. You are now, yeah. Obviously, Lydia's not an old lady. But I will not be revealing her age, 33. <laughs> right, we're going to hit the road, go and explore a new destination for the first time. Neither of us have been there before, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So it's so going to be... It's a 33 minute drive. Right. But so we need to close. check how far it is to the old flight house as well. Yeah, we'd love to get both of those in today. Are we going for anything in particular? To where? Just, to these places, for anything in particular or just having a mooch? Um, we're having a mooch, although there's stuff nice. that I want to look at at the old flight house. Who doesn't like a good mooch and a smooch? The old flight house is 11 minutes from Burgess Reclamation. Unbelievable. So we can go to... Burgess Reclamation Yes. first. Okay, yeah, I think so, because that's the one that we really want to go to. Because we've not been before. Yeah. Good. Definitely. Plan of action in place, let's do this. Well, we've just arrived to the Reclamation Yard. It's pretty large. Lily's having a little mooch around. Look at these little tubs. Buy some columns lids. <laughs> no. No. Some outdoor mirrors over there. They're nice, the outdoor mirrors. The outdoor mirrors. Yeah, there's loads though. There's quite a lot. You could make a right little beam. There's some really cool, unique stuff here. 
Oh, look at the um, mulberry. The mulberry tree wheels. By a lamppost. There's some wood out the back lids in the oak beams yard. Yes. Might be able to find some gnarly wood. I watch myself. Yeah. Vintage furniture. That's cool, look. Yeah, little yeah. And little sledges. Amazing. So I think I've just found the new chopping board, which is a butcher's block. We're just deciding whether to go for that size or this size here. It's incredible in here, look at this. It's amazing. Yeah. It was a successful trip done. We've walked away with a brand new butcher's block. Good times. So where we just were at in uh, Burgess Reclamation, this is the area they have at Top Flight. Top Flight? Take Flight. <laughs> that's Mark's that's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the old Flight House. Flight House. <laughs> we actually found out about Flight House from my cousin yeah. and my auntie. And it's so funny because when I walked in, I realised that it looks like my auntie's lounge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's why. Yeah. Got some really lovely stuff, haven't they? Actually, when it's all styled up like this as well, yeah, looks amazing. Very nice. Yeah, so we basically just bought the big version of this. Yeah, this is block. sat on the top of the yeah. yeah. And this is where we found our hallway table, so we didn't even realise it's from Burgess Reclamation. Yeah. It is. It was. It was right yeah. here. Lovely. Oh, look at that little boot. Um, Welly, yeah, that's lovely. That. Yeah, it is nice. Um, look at that butcher's Pardon? Yeah, wow. Rustic peasant. What? Rustic peasant. So it tells you where, you know, the... Like the little yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I love the briefcases. They're yeah. lovely. Yeah. So they've done this as well. So they've got a ladder and they put shelves across yeah. to create a shelving unit. I've seen that quite a lot now as on display. It's really clever, actually. And they're like the little army units on the right. Yeah. Filers. Wow, look at those briefcases. Very nice. Yeah. Get them those. You I need those it. for the new wardrobe, but I'll have to wait until the time is. Yeah. Well. But they are perfect. We've just come to the section of the shop where we found Lydia's reserved cloches. Yeah, I don't know if these are going to be too small though. These ones are good. Yeah. Not my area, I'm afraid. Yeah, I think I'm going to get them both though, and I'll I ask like, them to. I like the little, um, little wooden holders. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. easy to use. Mm. So earlier on, when I mentioned the area at the flight house that looked like my auntie's home, this is exactly what my auntie's home looks like, and <laughs> now I can see why. <laughs> it looks amazing, though, doesn't it? That is styled so well. Is it amazing? Oh my goodness. It's like this. It's a big Wowza. You just stepped into the garden section. The little garden room. Yeah. I really love these. Those? Yeah. Are these um, rhododendron? No, they're not rhododendron. Yeah. I do love the steps. I know. So nice. Well, this is uh, what we picked up. So we've got a lovely reef and these are some of the trays that we brought. And then underneath, when we go inside, I'll show you the butcher's block. And then Lydia got a couple of cloches and got a couple more vases as well. Another vase in there. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So not a bad little shop. Not a bad little shop at all. Lydia's put the new reef on the door. Very nice. Change. And I've just come back in and dropped the butcher's block onto the center island. We were just saying how lovely it would be if this was the full length and we actually cut some of the work top off and sunk it in because it's obviously very functional to have that chopping board. We're never gonna be moving that, it's so heavy, but really happy with it. Love the colors, works really nicely. 
and it's going to be really convenient um, when we're cooking in the kitchen to just have that out all the time. So we're not sure how this is going to get styled up with it yet. Lily's going to play around with it. But of course the catch has just been sitting here waiting for me to get back. So I'm going to get this into the oven ASAP and then I'll need to get busy loading the car up with all the golf kit because I need to head out to the driving range. Right, the focaccia's in the oven. Like I said, it had been left out for an extra hour than it should have been. Because of that, it might not be as good as it's supposed to be. However, fingers crossed that it goes smoothly and uh, I'll be enjoying that this evening when I get back with a little bit of oil, maybe a bit of balsamic vinegar. Perfect. In fact, a friend of mine actually brought me some balsamic vinegar for my birthday and there's two different types, but I've got one of them here. So I think I'm gonna give uh, these are try. They're called Mazzetti, a light-bodied balsamic vinegar, and it's uh, been matured in wooden barrels. So yeah, it should be delicious. I'm gonna give this a try later, actually. For show, I'm gonna leave lids to get busy in the house whilst I get myself to that driving range to try to work on my game, because when I played the day for the first time, I was playing okay, considering I've not played for so long, but there were some areas that I really wanted to work on, in particular the short game, so I'm probably gonna do a few drills tonight and try and uh, work on some consistency there. And uh, yeah, hopefully get that score down because I am gonna set myself a little bit of a goal this year. I've not decided what yet, but I wanna get a handicap that I want to sort of target myself to work towards and then that way I can monitor any progress um, that I do have or don't. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a nice way for me personally just to set that as a target. So I'm going to have to make that call soon actually as to what I'm going to uh, base my uh, aim around. But we shall see. We shall see. It does, honestly. You watch it, it'll take you When you get your protect. Might be a while. That was very aggressive, Jez. Very erratic, mate. <laughs> Give me this twist face. Straight there. Yeah, nearly, nearly made the fairway. <laughs> I see it. That's when you put it in your pocket, isn't it? There we go. No pressure, it's on the camera. Boomed it. That is huge. It's huge. Yeah, it's carrying 250. Jesus, that's handed over a Milton Keynes, mate. <laughs> Take that one. Take that. Just and a 263. Just the 159 MPH. Oh, beautiful. You're right. It should be right there. One thirty. I'll try this piece. I'll stuff on it. Twist face. I don't think I'll do it. I'll just say that. Feel pretty good. I'll be happy with that. Nice thing, huh? Yeah. Well, we based on, I feel like well, that's nice, Tom. That is really nice. Oh, that's a bit right. Flamingos Oh, is it not even on the board? Not even in the yeah. Well, the focaccia didn't rise, which was a shame, and it could have been because I left it out for too long, probably more than likely. It does taste quite nice. It tastes lovely. It just doesn't have the, <laughs> the aesthetic of a focaccia. No, we can try the other one though, can't we? It's, it's all the same dough, it's all sourdough. Yeah, so, so let's, try, let's just try the other one. Yeah. We'll do it again tomorrow. Well, this morning Lydia brought me a coffee in bed with our new mugs. How amazing do they look? I mean, I finished the coffee, of course, but they look so nice. I'm not sure where they're from, sorry. That's where they're from, guys. But they just look so, like, in keeping with everything in the new bedroom. Love it. So nice to hold as well. And the uh, lip on them feels really nice as well when you're drinking. So thumbs up to the new coffee mugs. Well, as you know, I had another bag of the sourdough from your daily dough. And so I'm not going to let yesterday's failure stop me. I'm going to give it another go. I'm well aware that I left it out to um, proof for probably an hour and a half to two hours too long, which I'm sure had an impact on the final result. Oh, are you okay, boy? 
Sounded like you were saying his throat then. He wasn't chewing anything though. So yes, um, I'm going to uh, have another go at it and what I'll do is rather than go through the process, I'm just going to uh, give it a go and I'll show you the result later on today. But fingers crossed, round two, uh, I'll try and be a little bit more precise with my timings because I guess it is something that's important. There's a reason why there's timings um, and uh, yeah, see how we go. I'd say that's a victory. So there we have it. It definitely feels nice and spongy, which is fantastic. I'm just going to... Cut a little sliver off the end here. She'll cut it here. There's a nice crunch on the top. There you go. You can see this. It smells amazing. I'm happy. It's actually a really lovely way of making a fresh loaf of bread or a fresh focaccia. I think I'm going to crack out some balsamic vinegar and oil and enjoy it with lids, but this is actually a really really nice process as long as you don't mess it up and not follow the instructions and you do as you're told then it actually is such a nice way to uh, make a fresh loaf of bread at home and actually it doesn't really distract too much from your day as long as you're staying at home so obviously when we were going out it was a bit of an inconvenience because we weren't physically able to be here uh, to follow the timings but if you're at home for the whole day and it probably takes about 15 minutes just to do the preparation areas and then the actual four hours that are involved in that you're only doing 15 minutes of work so that was close so yeah it's not very demanding in terms of timings it's just obviously having the duration of time free in the day to be able to uh, visit it in between uh, its resting periods so yeah happy days so what is it they say persistence is key Never give up, even if it's just baking a loaf of focaccia. It does look delicious, doesn't it? Ooh, look at that. Well, this could possibly be the last time we come out here for at least a week, possibly two. We're just forecast straight rain after today. I thought I'm gonna take the opportunity to get out here, continue stripping the ivy off these trees, do my last little bit of seeding. We've managed to get through six tun bags of British standard topsoil. So we've been making progress and now it's just a waiting game, hoping that it all comes to life over the next month or so. But I'm feeling hopeful. I've got a good feeling we've done everything we possibly could. Yeah, hopefully everything comes together and we'll start getting some good growth come through. Lydia has her cloches out from yesterday. The two small ones over on the herb garden section, which is lovely. And then the big one over my spinach, which is the most important of everything that's going on out here. You all right? One glove. I'll pop it on the wall. Yep. And this is going down in the greenhouse. It's lovely and warm in here. Yes. Oh, you changed the pots on the windows, nice. Yeah. So they're going to be used for having plants in. Yeah. That's what they're for. Yeah, I thought they looked better. I put one up there mm. um, yes. and I thought that they looked quite nice. So. I really loved the other one that you had. Yeah, I've, I've popped it down there for but now. But what I would say is, is that you can see a little bit more yeah. of these, because that was quite high, quite yeah. deep. So, no, lovely. Um, I need to get more of these, these deeper ones. To oh, what, these? And, yeah. yeah, like storage for underneath. Yeah, I need to just get a load yeah. of those. Do you think you're going to get a um, trough? What do you mean, like a trough planter? Yeah, like a... Uh, like, like the galvanised ones at Dalesford? Oh, uh, no, like, oh, you could do it, like a, basically something to put flowers out in front of your greenhouse. Oh, well, yeah, I do, ideally, I want a bench one side. Right, okay. I, I think probably this side for the yeah, bench. Yeah, because the woodland. So that you can sit and... Yeah. Um, I want to grab the... Um, wow, look at the cow pass. I know, it's, it's like up. sprouted up yeah. so much. Yeah, look how high it's getting out here. Really coming up. Wow. Unbelievable. The stairs, by the way, that are here, they are still going ahead. Uh, we're going to be putting some sleepers and shingles in, some stones, so it continues with the rest of the area. I don't know if we spoke about this already on my channel, so I apologise if I'm repeating myself, but I thought I'd just let you know. It's not, it's not <laughs> going to stay like this. This is going to be uh, properly installed, which is great.
As you can see, a blanket of seeds gone down all over this area. And I've just got my topsoil here. I've got probably another four or five wheelbarrows worth, and that's gonna be chucked down over the top of this, then raked in. And then let the rain do its thing. So there we have the pile of topsoil ready to be raked over. We're all raked out now, so like I said earlier, it's a waiting game. Get all that rain flowing and hopefully we'll get some germination and there'll be some grass before we know it. Well, I've just finished that little task off and Lydia's just had an Amazon order arrive, but she saw on, I think, somebody's Instagram yesterday actually, and I I think I may have mentioned before that we were going to install some lights uh, along this sort of runway up to the greenhouse. We're still waiting for the builder and electrician to free up some time to come and do it. As I was saying, yesterday on somebody's Instagram, Lydia saw some solar power light that are obviously ready to go. And they're only £26 off of Amazon. So I was like, my personal experience of solar power or batch pad lights has never been great. You find they fade quite quickly or they just don't have the performance. but. The account, which I cannot remember where it was, it was on one of Lydia's home accounts. The account had said that they were really good and they were really happy with them. So I thought, look, for 26 quid, buy them, we'll give them a go. And if they do the job, then great, happy days. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, have a quick go of installing them for her. I've already done one, really straightforward. It's just literally make a little hole, stake them in and away you go. These are the lights here, which as you can see, they've got these little stakes that you can push into the ground. So you can stick these around your garden. Uh, just to give a little bit of a lighting effect. I think there's eight in total. And then this is one that I've actually put into the gravel already, which looks pretty nice. Obviously you can tell that it's an LED solar because you can see the little solar grid, but I think they look quite smart. You know, just gonna light up each side of each bed as we work down. So we're gonna do two, four, six, and then I think we're gonna stick one either side of the walls of the greenhouse maybe at the very front I'll ask Lid to see what she wants but yeah shouldn't take too long to get busy doing that everyone else is in the greenhouse living their best life <laughs> Well, you may just be able to see them. There, there, there. Dosh, dosh, dosh. This one at the front left actually doesn't work at the minute, but maybe it needs a little bit more light first. But they're in. It took about, I don't know, 15 minutes. So very quick installation. And yeah, we'll see how they perform. Oh, rolling the dirt. We're rolling my dirt. Is that nice? And then you're going to come and jump on the bed. Isn't that right, darling? What are you like? Is that nice? So yeah, I'll link the uh, lights in the description box below. I'll also update you on how well they perform this evening. Well, there you have it. They're the solar powered LED lights. I think they look pretty good. Well, the weatherman didn't lie. It's been raining so much over the past few days and I'm here for it. I'm loving it because the grass has started to grow from what I can see. The sun has been coming and going for like five, ten minutes, but like quite frequently. So the warmth is probably being kept as well, which means that germination is in prime position. The sun's actually out for a good little period right now. We've got a cloudy but pretty blue sky. So I'm going to make the most of the opportunity and quickly go and get some plants in the ground because we're having the beds redone at the house and so some that have been taken out today need to be planted back in and we're going to put them in front of the greenhouse area. So I think I'm going to set you up inside and then I'm going to go out and uh, you'll be able to watch me get busy on the shovel. <laughs> As you can see just here we've got a few new plants that aren't new they're going to be upcycled or recycled from the flower beds and I just need to get them sunk into the ground so they don't dry out and die. So there's a hosta over here um, and I think a hydrangea behind it. I'm not sure what it is at the front. Um, and then there's a lavender that needs to go in over here. So yeah, oh, and there's another one in the middle there. There's a couple on the side here that have already been done. I just need to get these ones in the ground ASAP. So 
Let's go. inspecting the work I thought I'd quickly grab the camera and come out here with you and show you the grass hit an update it's growing I've started to come up obviously this was done about a week or a week and a half before this side was seeded so this will be a little bit slower probably gonna get a nice little boost though from the current weather I literally could not ask for better weather for growing grass right now it's raining, it's sunning, it's not too cold. It's literally the perfect conditions for growth. So hopefully we'll see a little bit more of that. What do you reckon then, Lummy? Any good? Yeah. Yeah. I love you. I love you. So we've just stuck these in the ground. Lydia's also got some bulbs in here as well, which I'm not actually sure exactly where they are. Lydia knows. But they're kind of like staggered, I think. A couple here, a few along the back. So this whole area will slowly grow up and fit out to the point where you won't see much soil, hopefully. And then on the right side, you see again, started to add to the collection. So I think this is the sort of beds that Lydia wants to be able to cut flowers and bring them in the house. But obviously we've just chucked in a couple of other things today, like the hostas, for example. I very much doubt she'll be cutting leaves, but they'll be nice in there anyway. They're like great at filling out space and they'll give some nice ground coverage. So they'll be very nice in there this year and that's about it we won't have any grass growth anywhere else oh that's what i want to talk to you about actually i'm sure you'll remember only a few vlogs ago i took the ivy off of this tree here and i couldn't get all the way up to the top not all the way up there a little bit too high on the ladders but i did get as high as i could but today nature's worked this thing for me and it's blown a load off into the neatest pile <laughs> by the side of the tree just here so I'm also uh, going to dispose of this but how convenient is that just fell off there it's just a little bit left still just up there there and there I've got a feeling the uh, wind's gonna take it down do the job for me which it has started to do already so yeah happy about that we'll have to see how that goes the cow parsley is still going very strong look at it Very good going. The wildflower starting to come through around the beehive, which is great. So good to see. There's quite a lot of it as well, actually. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera. If I go close, you can see it all over, which is fantastic. So I'd be really interested to see how this comes to life over the next month. I think we'll get some green coverage hopefully this is the current situation around the front of the house so as you can see we've got some empty beds I'm just keeping these trees and the trellis at the back these are going to be the rose beds either side so again they've just been stripped back it's been a really productive day out here today which is great where the aircon unit is as well, we're going to have a box and inbuilt. You can sort of see where these stakes are. Um, I'm not sure when this is going to be done, but we're going to have a wooden slatted box and in to hide all of this so it looks quite neat and tidy. And then around the front of the house, the roses have just started to go in. You can see. Wisteria is getting its first leaves. We're not anticipating for this to flower for apparently a decade. So, we have got some waiting to do here, haven't we? Yes, we have. Well, I really wasn't expecting to get an opportunity today to get out there and uh, do that because it literally has been raining all day. The sun just came out this evening. So I'm glad that's done. And I tidied up the dead ivy that had fell down on the ground. So mission complete. I'm going to get in the kitchen and uh, get cooking. And then after I've sorted out dinner, I have another uh, beekeeping Zoom call. I haven't had one in quite a while. And this isn't part of my 
um, course. I've actually completed the course now that's done. So it's just a case of catching up with the uh, local association, seeing what's going on. They have speakers and hosts that come on and do different talks, you know, every month. So I'm gonna jump on the Zoom call for that. And with regards to the bees, I've now been delegated a mentor, which is fantastic. He's actually the seasonal bee inspector, and apparently he is probably the most informed beekeeper of the whole association. So apparently I've hit the jackpot with him, and I'm just basically waiting for him to touch base to let me know when is a suitable time, if possible, to go and join him at his apiary. I then need to sign up for a swarm collection. So when somebody reports that there's a swarm, I'll be able to hopefully get the bees and put them in my hive as long as they're far enough away. I just really wanted to get into an apiary before I actually had bees here. I think that so much will change from theory to practical and I've done no practical, I've never handled bees. So it'd be really great to get over and actually get stuck in and help out where I can. It may still be a little bit early. I know that the bees will be out and about in these sort of temperatures, but there might not be much action. It's quite early on in the season, so it may be something I hear of later on in this month or maybe next month. But of course, when the bees are coming, or as soon as I find out that there may be a chance that I'm next on the list for a swarm collection, then of course I'll let you know. But I think it goes without saying, it's something that I'm really, really looking forward to, and I do feel ready. I just, like I said, I just want to do a little bit of practical work first. Well, me and this little man are just about to go out on our evening walk, but I thought I'd quickly show you where we're at with the garden, because as I mentioned just a second ago, we were having the beds done around the house. So as you can see, we've got some lovely mulch covering all the raised beds at the front of the house with buxus balls, roses, and then a load of different plants seeded in between. I think this is somewhere where there's been quite a lot of change. Kept a few of the trees that were in here already, including the silver birch. And then this is probably going to be my favourite bed because I just love ferns and they've got loads of them in here. <laughs> this is going to really fill out and uh, yeah, it's just going to be epic. So that's the bed here. And then down the side, they've got hydrangea annabelles that are pretty large and hold their heads for a very, very long time. And we've now got all of the trees supported and joined together. So that's going to be like a floating hedge. And then the same mimicked on the other side. It just looks so much tidier. Like if I quickly run back. <laughs> you see, it's looking very neat and tidy. And of course, we're not going to see the full effects for what's been done out here for probably 18 months. But we are going to get a, a feel for it this year, which is fantastic. But it just looks really nice now they've continued the box hedging all the way around the rose garden so as you can see we've got the roses in here which were roses that Lydia already had and uh, the box hedging is obviously new because we only just used to have the box hedging here we've got that both sides mirrored across which is lovely and this year in fact I've just remembered I need to come out today and feed all of the roses with the Uncle Tom's tonic which is a rose feed that was suggested by one of my neighbours. Um, I also need to feed the wisteria with some seaweed. But I've got the bird feeder filled up as well. Have a boy. You see we've got the hydrangea annabelles again down here. And then along this line over here. Some new box hedging put in along there. And then we've got the old box spools. And I'm not actually sure what's gone into this bed, but Lydia's really excited about it. So yeah, it's gonna be really nice to see how it all comes together, but it's just been tidied up and it's primed now ready for uh, summer, which is fantastic. Well, the time has come to wrap up the video. I hope you have enjoyed this one and everybody has a lovely rest of the week and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care, peace.